Okay, this is Negotiating with Jesus. I'm Tom. I did a funeral today, and it was very important to be uh, part of that uh, that process. So I'm this, like, I don't look that young, because I look uh, kind of tired-looking dude. So, whatever. Quit. Get off my case. Ugh. People are starting to annoy me. So I, I'm kind of new in the preaching game. But I've been youth ministry for a long time, so I get to talk all the time to teenagers who sit there and they're like, listening, I know what you guys are doing. You're like, when is this going to be over? Will you play games or eat candy? So, you know, I work with students, and to me, playing games are, is a lot of fun. I like games. I like candy. Come on. I like candy, but, man, I like talking. I like talking about uh, wrestling with God, that's something that I do. And negotiating with Jesus, is the whole idea is um, Jesus is someone who you want to confront. And when he says, who do you say I am? You want to you wanna wrestle around with those ideas. Who is Jesus? Why is he important after, you know, seemingly uh, a, an insignificant town, this carpenter, this dude, just an itinerant preacher, he walks around, he's killed by the Romans. And 2,000 years later, he has, I don't know, 2 billion followers, 3 billion followers. Changed the face of all of history. Worth checking out? Consider it. <laughs> Obviously, something's going on here. So I did a funeral, and uh, one of the readings was Isaiah. But I talked about uh, about the miracle of life, so... In a funeral, what you're doing is you're celebrating a life, and it's it's heartbreaking that somebody you love is gone, and you may have not re even realized how much you love them. But that idea, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. You, when somebody is gone, all of a sudden, it matters. So you all of a sudden are paying attention. So that's one of our biggest problems as humans, as we walk around in a world that is enchanted. It is a world of miracle. It is a world of, uh, it is it is a, uh, what, what is the phrase I want to say? It is a just-so story. Everything in the world is a just-so story. Uh, and a just-so story, the idea that Cinderella had to return. Her fairy godmother said, you have to return at midnight because your pumpkin, or your coach, is going to turn back into a pumpkin. And... Cinderella ought to have said to the fairy godmother, what the heck, fairy godmother? I'd like that if you could use your magical powers and make the, this dream come true, why would you make it for a couple hours one night? And then I go back to my old life. Why don't you just actually make it right? Why do I have to go under the uh, authority of this wicked stepmother and my two evil stepsisters? Can't you actually fix things? Well, no, I can give you a little wand and, you know, just for a short while. So the idea of a just-so story, why, Cinderella would ask, why midnight? That's just how it is. It's just so. Just do it. Listen to me. Midnight. And why? Why are stories, all stories are like that. Gravity is a just-so story. Why gravity? Why something rather than nothing. Everything in your life is a just-so story. Why kittens? They just are. And as much as you explain backwards, uh, you don't get anything but uh, a uh, infinite regress. Well, why kitten ancestors, whatever animal that uh, evolution says, well, they evolved from groundhogs. It's like, well, why are there groundhogs? Well, of course, they involve from mice. Well, why? Why mice? Well, of course, because snails at one time wanted to be able to scurry. Well, why snails? Because mud didn't want to just lay there. It wanted to be a slug. Well, why mud? Because, I don't know, water and dirt. So, it you know, infinite regress. It goes on and on. So... Here we are, we're living in a miracle, and, and we are seeds. Uh, we, are, we are seeds planted in the ground, and like 
like flowers that come from the earth. The beautiful thing that is people, we see this thing bloom, and we're like, well, that's a good one. That's a beautiful thing right there. And then it says in Matthew or in Isaiah 40, all people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Um, so uh, what I want to get at here is uh, that there's a miracle that happens right in front of you from this seed, which looks like a stone. You drop it in the ground and you care for it and out pops a flower. And it's something beautiful and surprising. And we humans are so dull. We live in an enchanted world and we don't notice. We have a best friend that is, is a joy in our life. And suddenly they die in a car crash. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we notice, you know, something's wrong with the world. I had this joy, this joy, wonder-filled gift. And now it's gone. Well, we get used to the wonder, and we think that it's normal. But the wonder is not normal. The enchantment in the world is not normal. It's some kind of uh, miraculous thing that God did. And the idea that God spoke, and there was a universe. Uh, what's surprising is that, uh, that God would do that and give you this gift. And it's surprising, it's so surprising, we ought to be walking around with our jaws hanging open and saying, you know, we see a kitten and we're like, what in the world, look at that fluffy wonder. And we see a flower and we're like, oh, it's beautiful. And we yank it up by its roots so we can sniff it good. And then we see the sunrise and it's like, that is so beautiful, it's painting the sky. And every time we say something, every time we see something, we ought, if we were awake, if we were not zombie-like dead creatures walking, we, we would say, that is amazing. And we wouldn't be talking to the air or the ground or the sun when we see the sunset. Nice job, sun. You don't compliment the sun on being uh, beautiful. The sun doesn't care what you think. You compliment God. Whenever you say, that was an amazing sunset, you're actually talking to God. And when you say, that song is so cool, you're actually talking to God. It's a compliment to someone who made music. And if you say, that musician did a really great job creating that music, the music, mu what is it called? The musician is is a work of God. God puts all these things into place and we're like always amazed and in wonder and awe of this work that God has done and we keep uh, complimenting at a very low level and it's uh, the idea I'm going to talk to Paul about low resolution that we're always working in this area where where we're really groveling in dirt when we ought to be looking up and saying God, you've done some pretty wonderful things. So it was a funeral. I talked a little bit about Isaiah. Then we went into John um, 16. No, John 14. And we talked about... Uh, I'm going to type that in. John 14. We talked about uh, Jesus comforting his, his disciples and saying, Look, all the things that you see here, you trust God, don't you? And we do. We trust God with everything. We trust God and everybody does. Everybody believes that whatever beautiful things ought to happen, they will happen. We're always surprised when they don't and we're disappointed and we're upset. Jesus says, you trust God, don't you? Trust me also. And it's some of the sweetest words ever spoken. Um, we do trust God. And I don't care how ornery you get with me saying, I don't believe in God or I don't trust God. You trust all the things that operate within the world in such a beautiful way, you trust that they will work for you. And they do. And then when they don't, you want to curse God or you want to be disappointed. But the fact is, if you have a beautiful gift, you should be thankful. There's no reason for you to have that beautiful gift. Your life 
the music you love, all of that is a just so story just dropped into you um, that you can look around and, and see the wonders of the world. It's a just so story that you're dropped into and it's beautiful and we ought to find a way to wrestle with God and say, you know what, I'll give you glory. Uh, I'll let you, I'll let God be God and I'll just be a thankful participant in that beautiful story that God creates. So a funeral, John 14, uh, in, his fa in my father's house there are many rooms and I'm coming to take you there. Get to know Jesus. Stop letting your hearts be troubled. Read John 14, read Isaiah 40. I will talk to you later. Negotiating with Jesus, I'm Tom. Like and subscribe. Uh, if you listen to that song that I did, you know, don't be mean to me. Just don't be mean. Knock it off. Oh, you little, uh, bye.